Welcome back. It's time to uh, take uh, a look at the papers and what they have to say. Our guest is already on standby. Ezekiel Ngai took uh, politician, uh, administrator, uh, public affairs analyst, joins us um, live. Ezekiel Ngai, good morning to you. I should have had a businessman, uh, preacher, preacher as well. <laughs> Thanks so much for having me and um, good morning. Fantastic, fantastic. All right, um, we'll just take the, the major stories from the papers and we'll go into details or more of the headlines as time uh, uh, permits us. We'll start with the first one we have this morning, The Nation, or The Punch in Super, rather, uh, with the following headlines. Governors stop deductions, consultants head for French court. This is talking about Paris Club refund. Governors stop deductions, consultants head for French court. NNPC meets marketers as petrol scarcity bites harder. Um, I don't know what the situation is in, in uh, Aquabum State. Um, there's an editorial there. <laughs> it's quite interesting. Paul ranks Obiano as best Anabra governor since 1999. Um, obese plane grounded. Uh, campaign train seeks alternative arrangements. Uh, some of the stories on the front page of uh, uh, The Punch. Leadership has the following uh, stories. Now, the leadership's lead story. After leadership reports, INEC moves to tackle campaign spending breaches. It's good to see uh, these uh, newspapers doing investigative pieces to expose certain things and, uh, you know, control the, uh, the conversation. Uh, uh, right, so that's an interesting one. Over to the next uh, paper, Daily Trust, uh, which has the lead story, 2023 budget. Finance ministry on the spot, over 424 billion Nara padding, it puts padding in inverted commas. I think uh, we can add more to that 206 billion Nara they added to the Ministry of um, uh, a Humanitarian Affairs budget. Quite interesting times. And the nation has the lead story electricity crisis. Governors reject sale of 10 power plants. NGF insists on legal solution to $418 million. Paris Club refund fee route. Um, uh, let's start with the, with the finance uh, ministry story. And uh, those who have been watching, I mean, for, for, for the past few days, you know, I've been really hammering on this finance ministry issue because um, something is not just right. What are your thoughts on, on, on the situation, the so-called alleged uh, budget padding? Again, he rearing his uh, ugly head. The writer to that story says lawmakers decry in sessions Ministry denies allegations. It's a ploy to divert taxpayers' funds, Rafsanjani, and it's uh, being investigated. Malami is, has already put his mouth into the conversation. I don't know if he, this concerns him. Over to you, sir. Yeah, you know, the issue of budgets is one issue that um, a lot of times I really don't understand. There's a process for budgeting. It's a very simple, straightforward process. It is that of the um, the, 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 the executive to initiate, they bring it to the National Assembly. By my understanding, is that of the National Assembly to vote as it were, uh, based on certain parameters or fundamentals or principles. Now, when this is done, they call the people to come and defend so that after they had looked through, they would ask a certain number of questions. Those questions are, you did this last year, and from our oversight, we discovered that this was still there. Why do you still have this year? We don't think that makes sense. Then all the, 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 the policy thrust of government has moved from consumption economy to production economy. Why isn't there indicative of the policies why are we still having this subhead that seems to promote the latter rather than the new direction? You know, they go through all those processes to ensure that the resources that we have match our visions in terms of the direction we want to go as a government and that the cost reflective indices are such that there is a certain level of prudence and accountability and transparency and honesty. I think these are the jobs that the National Assembly would do and to ensure that, you know, whatever para monetary para parameters that they are applying, you know, within the period are applied in the budget because it starts from the budget. At the end of the day, 
they have a public hearing if uh, as it were or get in some professional input to ensure that the resources of nigeria on one hand and then the expenditure profile they fit our national vision within the period now this is what should be and the budget is eventually after being scrutinized it is passed and sent to the executive to implement such that if the executive for one second deviated from it it becomes an impeachable offense anything that is an impeachable offense is the highest level of you know what can never be tampered or toyed with but I really don't see this. Instead, all I find is people from the ministry coming with things that are just so bogus. They are so difficult to understand, so opaque. And then the National Assembly coming in with what comes up as their own personal interest, which is always expressed as budget padding. And at the end of the day, it's like dog eats dog, you know? And who loses? It's the citizens. It's a nation. And um, so I really don't know where to start from to answer your question. But I think that we need as Nigerians to start to elect people into office that really understand the essence of government, which is service delivery to their people and not to themselves. All this is just a manifestation of, you know, private interest, state capture, you know, personal enrichment all right I, I i always raise questions about you know the performance of the minister minister of finance i mean because uh, i've always said you know that uh, in times past one always expected you know to have a minister of finance who has personality who has a philosophy a style you know brings something some character to to the the, the portfolio but um for the current minister of finance all we see is she announces how much nigeria is borrowing she announces how much nigeria is spending and, and that's uh, and then if there are new taxes, you know, you know, yeah. to 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 be created, she announces, you know, how much more Nigerians will have to pay as tax, and and that's pretty much it. If you, if you notice, I very tactfully dodged that aspect of um, you know very very important aspect, but I, I would rather um, look at things fundamentally and and you know giving giving um, from a from first principles with respect to our budget you know processes and them um, undertakings as per the person of the minister of finance you know i, I don't know how the mindset of mr president is but there's no need starting to interrogate that i had already given myself a commitment that because he signed the electoral act. I forget everything is done wrong. And I even gave a post-dated check that everything he will do wrong till he leaves the office. I've already signed off as forgiven. So um, I won't go back and take my words. I think that <laughs> she will enjoy that grace till the end of the day. Do, do you think she has, she has uh, uh, to, so, to bear some of the blame for the state of uh, the, the economy? Especially, especially has, the state of uh, the government's financial, you know, health. Let's call it that. When you are called Minister of Finance, guy, that that title is the general overseer, superintendent over our our state with regards to finance, and finance is virtually everything about government, money. Or guy in charge of money, money matters, you know. So for where we are now, we, you know, and God made it such that we've had a reference point. We once had a lady called Madame Ngozi Okonjo Iweala. Let's have a study of her person, her interest, her approach, her undertakings, and know that we have a reference point. So it's not that we've never had one. You know, and then um, I, I think two ladies have stood out in our history. Maybe there are more. One is Dora Akuili. Till tomorrow, she's left a mark on the sands of time. And the other person is still alive, Madame Okonjo Iweala. And she's been not just 
talked about but rewarded at the highest, which is the global stage, with the appointment she's got. And have you noticed that not one person has come out to precise her? I mean, of course, little bits are read. Nobody, nowhere in the world is talking to her with respect to incompetence or inability to occupy the office. I think that in profiling the people that we want to have in our offices, we need to do a little more work on who should be a minister of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. This act of patronage or pre bendalism I don't even know how to put it, or, you know, kinsmen patro patronage, political uh, patronage. Patronage still comes over and over again. I, I think that um, we need to check it in the next administration. All right. Uh, President Wan Buhari is uh, superintendent over uh, a change in Naira notes for the second time in his life um, after he did so as in the 80s as a military head of state. And it seems to be yielding results already uh, in terms of mopping up or reducing liquidity, uh, mopping up cash in circulation. It's not, it's, there's a bigger, there's a much <laughs> bigger picture to Okay, it. but can I, can I just read the, read the headline for you? Because I like to hear what you have to say. But the, the Daily, Daily Trust is saying, as Buhari unveils new Naira notes, 165 billion mopped up. You know, uh, the central bank said it has received a total of 165 billion naira so far out of the, the 2.7 trillion naira already currently outside the banking system. So it seems it's, um, uh, it, it's working. <laughs> Call it work. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> or should I say uh, Onaga? <laughs> look, I'm, I'm itching on this matter. Um, apart from electoral art, the president has given me a sweetener. I am one of his cheerleaders in this change of currency. I'll tell you this, my brother. Watch out. The amount of money, you see, Nigeria can never work until we have a governance system that understands Chapter 2, Section 14, Subsection 2B of our Constitution that states that the security and welfare of the people shall be the primary purpose of government. And the only way we will get that right is when people who come into public office motivated, sent by that desire to serve, you know, until we have people who get into government based on a desire to serve, we will never get things right. Now, these people that come based on a desire to serve are usually not always the richest, you know? But those who have amassed a lot of, you know, corrupt money want to maintain that estate so they have a lot of money. So they come into the political space with a lot of monetary inducement based on what they are stolen. I remember going on campaign and a young man said, oh, God, drop the money, drop the money. I know I stopped. I called him. I said, come, let me talk to you. I want you to know that I've never held any office in this land and that every money I drop here is my private money that my family should be using to eat. Number two, I want you to know that I've never accepted any appointment, in which case coming here is a man who wants to serve you. Why would I pay you to serve you? If you want somebody that will serve you, then pay that person and work with me. But if you want somebody that will pay you money, then be ready to shut up for four years and not let that person recoup his investment. So it was like, you know, I give credit to the young person where it's like, wow, I didn't think of it that way. Okay, it makes sense. But what am I trying to relate to what's going on? These people had put out so much money for 2023. Because of this mop-up, all that money is going to go back into the system. And luckily, it's at a time that we have the likes of Peter Obi, Kwan Kwan, so, you know, um, um, Adewale of SGP, people who are coming, so the, the, the coast is open. In Akwaibom State, people like us have been able to come in. So let us discuss based on your person, your character, your competence, your capacity, your capability, your track record on one hand, and not how much money you have. So as we get into January, a lot of the money would have gone back into the bank, okay? And even those who were busy buying dollar, buying dollar, when you realize that, when you come into January, 
And you see, Nigerians are always slow. They were not sure that this is people will give them confidence and don't worry, politicians will make them to change their mind. They will change their mind. You will see that as from today, the banks are going to start to have, have real heavy traffic because they know that the countdown has begun. But people are going to tell them, don't worry, they will extend the date line until after politics. They are lying to people. When the reality sets in, people are going to be sleeping in banks to turn in the money. And what you realize is that in, by the time we get into January, a lot of the money is in the bank. What they now have is dollar. A dollar will come down to less than 500. Even at 500, what we have is $100 bills. At 500, one dollar bill is 50,000 naira. Nobody is going to use one dollar bill to buy votes. Nobody. 50,000 is not going to work. So you realize that people are even going to now trade off their dollars for 200, you know, for 20,000. You know? So it's like, look, just give me so that at the end of the day, they will not have money to buy votes. So election is going to be based on what you're able to give to the people. And this, the, the, the election results are going to surprise many. I have said something. Let me end on this note. On election day, let INEC almost make it mandatory that every major candidate, especially governorship, presidency, they must have a doctor in the house with them because <laughs> many people are going to slum on the results they get. Oh, my. Oh, my. It's okay. yeah, it interesting. Yeah, you see why I call you a man of God in the introduction because you're a prophet. I mean, you've seen the vision uh, <coughs> already. Uh, we, we have to leave it at that. Uh, I think um, we, we've done justice with the time we had you know, to the issues. Um, you're an insider, so you know better than most uh, what is going on. Um, do some people do not trust oh, the... Not inside Central Bank, oh, my inside... <laughs> I know, I know. But, uh, but so, some don't people don't trust... Money. Yeah, <laughs> some people don't trust the motives of uh, the Central Bank governor because he's a card-carrying member of the APC. I know maybe this part of the natural penchant of Nigerians to, you know, uh, you yeah. know distrust everything and uh, uh, suspect everything government does. But you've said it all, that uh, this will be for the best for Nigeria. Doesn't matter I whether I may feel he's a member of APC or not. Thank you very much for your time. Thanks so much. It's a pleasure. Home. God bless. All right. All right. So, Songo, uh, we'll be back with more Thank right you. here on the breakfast. We we'll take a break. When we return, the CBN is uh, taking action to control inflation. Recently, the Monetary Policy Committee met and interest increased the the monetary policy rate to 16.5%. What does this mean for inflation in the country? We'll discuss this when we come back.